Good evening, gentle listener, and welcome to Distractable, with your hosts, Mark, Bob, and Wayne. This week, the activity of camping. So my story, for your consideration, out of the river, out of the river. and into the axe So this story comes from the summer right after I graduated from high school, summer of 2007, the summer right before I met you fellers at college. Nice. Uh, all my high school buddies and I were going to different schools. Some of them were going to schools together, but no one else was coming to the University of Cincinnati. And we were like, we got to celebrate this. This is a milestone. We, we're done. We graduated. We made it. We survived. And so all the guys were like, you know what? We should do a trip. And uh, the trip turned out to be an unbelievably epic journey that I literally remember vividly, have not forgotten a day in my life. And... Also, it's a thing I would never have signed up for had I known going in what it was. But because I I all in and it was with my buddies and I let them plan it, I got sucked into this crazy ass journey. And so for context, the group that was going on this trip was five guys. Two of us were normies. The other three were all Eagle Scouts. So it comes to like the Saturday morning where we're all going. We drive to like the middle of nowhere. Basically, they've told us it's a camping trip. They didn't give us like no prep, but they were like, you know, we'll have, we got tents and stuff coming on our ass. We'll bring all the campy stuff. Just bring what you think you'll need for like camping, like maybe bug spray, sunscreen, whatever. Pack a lunch. And Normie friend and I were like, okay, okay, we can handle that. Like, you know, cooking wieners on the campfire or whatever. So we leave super fucking early so we can get to this place early in the morning and do what we're going to do. We arrive at like 8 a.m. at this place that rents kayaks and canoes. And everyone is like hyped. I've never done kayaking or canoeing in my life, but how hard can it be? You sit down, the river pushes you. I'm like, how hard can this be? We're just going to sit and hang out for a few hours and, and like go down this river. And so we get the whole spiel. The guy's giving us life jackets, explaining how it works. And he's like, okay, I'm going to drive you up river. So he starts driving us. We all get in his big van, starts driving us to the starting point. It takes way longer than I would have thought. Like a solid 45 minute drive. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, the cars go pretty fast. Like we weren't like crawling. We were going like, you know, 40 miles an hour, 45. And I was like, how, how long is this kayak trip? Like maybe it's really windy. Maybe it takes way longer to drive up there. I was like, I'm still here. I'm on board. And Normie friend and I, I think are sharing the same thing. Cause he's starting to look a little concerned. We finally get there. 45 minutes later, we get to the place where there's just like a pile of kayaks by the side of a river, and that's it. We all get out of the van, and dude's like, all right, here you go. This is your starting point. Uh, have fun, guys, and like drives away. And the Eagle Scouts are very dutifully like putting their waterproof bags onto their kayaks and getting set up, and Normie and I are like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So what do we... We just put one of these in the water, and it's not promising. Mm-hmm. At this point, we learn... We have fully committed to and have <laughs> no way to get out of a 26 mile kayak journey down the river. <laughs> and so this is where the, the serious issues start to really shine for my normie friend and myself. They had told us to pack a lunch, right? They didn't say pack a waterproof lunch. Maybe they did and I missed it. Our Eagle Scout friends had these bags that like are waterproof no matter what. Like put your cell phone in it, keeps it safe, totally watertight. Normie friend and I had lunch bags, brown paper lunch bags <laughs> with just like a sandwich in it. And the kayaks that we had, there were the open top kind where you sit on top and you like you put your bag behind you or in between your legs. There's no enclosure. There's no dry compartment. It's a floating log that you have to sit on top of and paddle down the river. I'm seriously considering like, ooh, this is going to be a little more than I anticipated. But like, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. And so we all get our boats. The Eagle Scouts are trying to teach us how kayaking works. And I'm like, it's a paddle. It's fine. It's not that easy. <laughs> it takes a lot of core strength to sit up in a kayak. I don't know if you've ever done it. It's very wobbly. But uh, finally, we're in the water. We're going. Everything's fine. No one gets, you know, your feet get wet. No lunches get wet. We go for maybe like half a mile, maybe less. And we come across uh, the river being not a river at all. It's gravel. (laughs) And not like a little bit of gravel, like a couple hundred feet of dry as a bone gravel across the whole thing. As it turned out, there was not a very good rainy season that spring. Uh And the entire river was low. Your lunch was saved. So yeah, my lunch wasn't going to get wet. Neither was the kayak or my feet or anything else. The way you resolve this is you have to get out 
drag your kayak over the dry part and get back in on the other side. Mm -hmm. This quickly became a theme of the trip. The entire river is low. 26 miles. I think possibly 20 of those miles (laughs) were dry (laughs) dragging (laughs) our dumbass kayaks over non-floating surfaces. (laughs) And like, for again, another tip for beginning kayakers, getting in and out without it dumping over and looking like a total dumbass is like the hardest part. Kayaks are not inherently stable. And like every time getting in and out is like a gamble of like, ooh, am I going to bust my head open on some rocks or is this fine? (laughs) Anyway, so that's river trial number one. But so just quickly dovetails into river trial number two, which is that my kayak was slowly gaining weight. (laughs) <laughs> that's always a good sign it turned out somehow out of the mountain of kayaks that were sitting at the start i picked one with like a pinhole in it mm-hmm. yeah so it's slow so and the pinhole's not like on the bottom it's like on the side somewhere but i'm a big boy and so as i'm sitting drowning this poor kayak it's slowly filling with water the whole time and not where it's like i'm sitting there and two minutes later i'm like oh i'm sinking Hours later, we realize my kayak is filled with like a few gallons of water at this point, which is not enough to sink it, but it's enough that like my butt started to get wet, right? Like the whole thing is drooping in the water. It's a serious issue. You're totally fucked at this point with a slowly sinking, non-fixable kayak that I have to drag across a bunch of dry spots in the river. So luckily, the resolution is that we eventually come to another spot. Apparently, there were shorter trips along this river. And so we come to another spot, a drop-off spot, where it's like, this was not a kayak drop-off spot, unfortunately. But there were canoes. So one of my friends sacked his kayak, and I dumped my sinking piece of shit kayak, and we grab a canoe... If you know anything about canoes, canoe paddles are short and maneuverable because you got to sort of paddle on both sides of a canoe. Kayak paddles are maybe twice or three times as long as canoe paddles. But that's all we have. So our two idiots, well, me, idiot, and Eagle Scout friend, climb into this canoe and try and pilot it with these giant fucking unwieldy kayak paddles. There weren't canoe paddles with the canoes? No, they were just canoes piled up there. You get the paddles from the place where you park your car. I mean, if you, if you think about it, you probably could have made a canoe paddle. You did have three Boy Scouts or Eagle Scouts with you, rather. We we considered cutting our kayak paddles in half, but we thought that the dude who owned the place might find that kind of rude. <laughs> That's his fault. He was driving you up the mountain. He didn't look out the window and be like, oh, the river's kind of dry today. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I should. Ah, no, he knew. He definitely knew, but he didn't say shit. In the car ride up there, he may have been like, oh, there might be some low spots. You'll be fine. Just drag it over. <laughs> he fucking knew. There's no way you own a kayak canoe rental place, and you don't know that your river is totally shit and mostly rocks. <laughs> Uh, 